गुड मॉर्निंग सत्याकाल आदाब वालेकुम सलाम यू नो दिस इज माय यूट्यूब सेशन एंड वील बी डिस्कसिंग टुडे व्हाट आई हैड डिस्कस्ड विद टू सीनियर बंगलो ओनर्स मिस्टर टी एन वाल एंड मिस्टर इंदू रखिया फ्रॉम जबलपुर दिस इज वे बैक इन 2009 थाउजेंड नाइन आई हैड ड्राफ्टेड टू द डिस्कशन विच वी हैड मेड Now this is basically reading of the category three lands. How do we deal this issue in the lower courts at the time of our pleading the evidences? You know, I would like to read word by word what I am going to read today on a draft of more than about thirteen, fourteen pages, which may be carrying in my two or three series in continuation. this is on management of lands now how do we say where is it written under section 9 of cla rules 1937 management of lands one class a land except for such areas or classes or a of areas as may from time to time be declared by the central government to be under the immediate management of the military authorities themselves shall be entrusted to the meo now these are those lands here we shall read section 9 sub para 3 of it now this says class b3 and class b4 lands under the management of meo by a defense department letter number so and so of 4th may 1938 all classes b3 and b4 land in cantonments other than those lands which have been entrusted to the management of the cantonment board has been entrusted under sub rule 5 of this rule to the management of the meo write this letter dated 4th may 1938 now again there is a small correction please read it very and note it now these are those lands which are not entrusted to the cantonment board or the cantonment authority now if we read section 93 it says land as per sub rule 5 of section 9 entrusted to the meo for sake we shall read the same section for the duties in respect to management of class a lands see the note to rule section 14 and also see section 14 what it states the the whole rule reads for class a lands to be managed by the meo it does not speak of b3 lands how then the meo is maintaining lands so called b3 now this is so clearly mentioned that he the meo is not supposed or authorized to do this but he is still doing now how do we prove this point what i just said this is very important and this is how we will understand so let's now revert ourselves back and let's go back to the army regulation and or the army instructions as per the 1925 cla rules or the mlm now an extra 35 of 1927 says army instructions part 1 says land inside cantonments now under the provisions of rule 12 of the cla rules 1925 the government of india directs that in future all areas of lands and cantonments which are in active use or occupation by any department of the army or the royal air force in india and shall in absence of the government orders to the contrary rent entrusted to the management of the meo of the cantonment the management of land means the development of its resources and includes the planting and maintaining of trees and as such the disposal of use of land 
all receipts have to be headed to this so when we read this lands which is inside cantonments and who's to be entrusted it is the mu this is the whole classification is defined in the cla rules on page 96 if you read it so i'll not read the whole thing now reading in between trees on land which is in the occupation of the military farms and remont departments will be in the sole charge of the department concerned and all charges and receipts in connection therewith will be passed through the accounts of the department to the quartermaster general wide at circular number 13 of 13th october 1914 area of land for brick quarries area of lands occupied by factories area of land occupied by indian army ordnance corps soldiers hospitals gardens this is again as per the army paragraph 467 and 468 of the regulation of indian army the royal air force ground and landing ground you know kind of aerodromes these areas will remain in charge of that department of the army so the receipts of all this will come through the account section now there was another part in the same army regulation that was land outside cantonments under rule 3 of the complementary land rules the management of land outside cantonment will in the absence of the orders to the contrary remain with the heads of the department define one in rule 2 quarter master journal the master journal of the ordnance engineers the engineer in chief air force commanding the military state officer of the area will at present only undertake from the head of the department the management of such land as an opinion of the goc commander in chief of that command the practice of crediting receipts you know uh the in uh, in many cases it said the duties of the civil authorities on these lands everything will be coupled similarly trees disposal of them and the use of rock will go to the different department civil administration as well as the mu immediately the same land outside if it is in occupation of any of the regiments or of any of the military stations and areas outside containment to station regimental funds in absence of any of these contrary orders which i just spoken everything will be given to the military farms or the military state officers you know this is how the department has reviewed these wide its letter number 902 of 1920 now if we read the same which land is in the management of the mu this is very important now see there were two types of lands lands within cantonments and lands outside cantonments now which is land in active possession of the army second is to enjoy the use of fruct of these lands so who's the mu and what is it supposed to do is this mu can only have these rights on the lands now if we further read subsection 4 of rule 9 class b3 b4 lands under the management of cantonment boards by defense department letter number 1283 of 12th march 1942 the central government has entrusted to the management of cantonment boards all b3 b4 lands in the areas in cantonment notified as bazaar area under section 43a of the cantonment act 1924 that is all those areas specified in note 3 to rule 2 sub 3 these are those lands to whom the management is entrusted to the cantonment board now we read these various letters mentioned as per the orders by defense department letter number 14th november 1941 another letter of 12th march 1942 we have a third letter of 23rd december 
1942. Similarly, it goes on to 20th February 1943, and then 23rd February the 1943. The central government has entrusted to the management of cantonment boards all Class B3 and B4 land in the area which are for the time being declared as bazaar under Rule 2B. Of these rules, as described by the Defence Department notification enumerated in the Rule 2 sub para 4. Now, there is a very important point in note which we have to understand here, friends. Now, he says B3, B4 lands. Why these so many letters which I just mentioned above, and as per Rule 2 sub para 3 on the page 7 of CLA rules. Every cantonment needs to notify the bazaar area. Like for the Kant Ambala, I would say it was notified on these subjective dates. That was twenty second May nineteen thirty seven. Then it was amended into on twenty eighth February nineteen forty two. Another amendment came on tenth October nineteen forty two. The last amendment, as mentioned in the book, is sixteenth January nineteen forty three. Now there is a very important doing. Now prior to these letters or notifications, there was no bazaar area. Here again, he classifies lands which are so-called bazaar area. Why is he saying so? Where is the bungalow area, or should we call it the civil area? Can we say this that? Prior to these notifications of 1937 under Rule 2, the entire bazaar area was the bungalow area originally. If you read the continuation of Section 9.4, Defence Department letters, which I just mentioned, all management and its duties are entrusted to the cantonment boards of B3 and B4 lands called bazaar area. so there is something missing which we are unable to interpret let's relate these rules now by relating these two rules rule 9 and rule 6 b3 land which is held by any private person under the provision of these rules or which is held or may be presumed to be held under the provisions of the cantonment code Of eighteen ninety nine or ninth of nineteen hundred and twelve, or under any executive order previously enforced, subject to conditions under which the central government reserves or have reserved to themselves the proprietary rights in the soil, and this is how the definition comes to us. If we read the same rule and interpret the same class B land, sub rule three, it says presumed to be held. This clearly shows that there is no document forthcoming that we were in B three lands. Otherwise, if a document is forthcoming either under the Cantonment Code or of eighteen ninety nine or nineteen hundred twelve. or they could have been an executive order so do we presume that the executive order is the ggo 179 or either of the 260s or whatever that is the most important point now i'll define rule 8 sub para 3 as per 1925 land here in after called b3 land which is granted to any private person under the provision of these rules or which has been granted in the past to any private person or may be presumed to have been so granted under the provisions of the cantonment code or 1912 or under any executive order previously in force subject to conditions under which government of india reserves or has reserved to themselves to proprietary rights in the soil now we have to understand that ggo is an executive order here it is clearly saying 
and its applicability has to be done as per the notification or has to be bylawed for your containment and the most important issue to state is that there is no classification of land in 1836 when this ggo was there so friends if you read uh, there was a classification of land in the form of category 1 2 3 and they furthered on into those now as per category 3 we have lands which are classified as a b here we have to see that there is no bifurcation of class b lands to anything as per category 2 we have lands which are classified as c now what is as per category 3 category 3 land is private land over which neither the government nor the containment authority possesses any rights except for the purpose of assessment or taxation or the enforcement of sanitary control and building safety friends once again i am saying we were old grants and the britishers till the last 1937 in these jumble and these puzzle of laws kept saying we are old grants never converted into new grants so wake up and please this video of mine is very declarative thank you good day